support to their government. Sorry, Andy, I had to stop screen sharing so I could yeah. start the recording. I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it. We, we have a pretty straightforward agenda. Um, it's the welcoming what you're doing now. We do want to start with a prayer, which Gina will lead us through. A little table setting. Uh, we'll talk about some of the privacy concerns that, um, that are um, consistent with volunteering either in the archdiocese or in our parish. Who our partners will be, are rather, and then we'll get into sort of the neighbor's where they'll be living, and then um, the tasks and opportunities that you all have to help out. All right. So let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, when you multiplied the loaves and fishes, you provided more than food for the body. You offered us the gift of yourself, the gift which satisfies every hunger and quenches every thirst. Your disciples were filled with fear and doubt, but you poured out your love and compassion on the migrant crowd, welcoming them as brothers and sisters. Lord Jesus, today you call us to welcome the members of God's family who come to our land to escape oppression, poverty, persecution, violence, and war. Like your disciples, we too are filled with fear and doubt and even suspicion we build barriers in our hearts and in our minds. Lord Jesus, help us by your grace to banish fear from our hearts that we may embrace each of your children as our own brother and sister, to welcome migrants and refugees with joy and generosity while responding to their many needs, to realize that you call all people to your holy mountain to learn the ways of peace and justice to share of our abundance as you spread a banquet before us, to give witness to your love for all people as we celebrate the many gifts they bring. We praise you and give you thanks for the family you have called together from so many people. We see in this human family a reflection of the divine unity of the one most holy Trinity in whom we make our prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, Gina. Um, next, it's really just administrative. Um, CCAB, the Catholic, um, has certain rules, and some of those are no photos and no social media, no posting if you are working with the folks. Um, all volunteers will have to sign documents that are consistent with the Cori form that you're all familiar with. So if you if you're interested, there will be a, just a couple of steps, but the most important one is no photos and no social media. Okay. So our partners, um, this opportunity came to us um, through the congregation of the Sisters of St. Joseph. Um, they have very generously donated a house and a number of you who've been involved in the refugee ministries know that housing is usually the biggest challenge um, finding finding affordable housing, finding the housing nearby. And in this case, it's a house in Newton, and they have very generously offered the house um, without rent and without any expense for utilities. So it's an incredible opportunity. And they view this as an ongoing ministry that they're looking forward to partnering with us um, and Catholic Charities on moving forward. So it's been really a, a tremendous blessing to have them uh, join us, and they are very excited about this as well, and they've al already started um, with um, Kathy Schneider um, outfitting the house, so it's a great it's a great start. Our partner through whom we will be receiving the family is the Archdiocese of Boston, and our main contact there is Philip Daggety, um, and then we've been very thankful that some prior members of the refugee ministries and and maybe I'll let you introduce yourself and Barbara, you can do the same, but talk about your experience. Um, and we'll be looking to them as mentors and coaches. And then I'll mention um, Temple Shalom after that. And Barbara? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so uh, we, um, we did not have a house. Um, we welcomed our co wonderful Comey family at the airport and um, brought them to the Allaire's and then the Allaire family kept them for about a month um, while 
we worked with a, a landlord in Roxbury to get a permanent um, rental property for the family. Uh, mom, dad, uh, three children at that moment um, from Sudan. And um, mom was expecting a fourth baby, which we had. Um, and just to say, um, we had about 30 volunteers and outstanding, wonderful people um, who were generous and helped in any way that we needed. We, uh, I, I think a couple of difficulties we had were with the medical piece. Um, two of the children had serious medical issues and those had to be addressed, um, which we did. We were very fortunate to have nurses on the team, which are very important. And um, Andy's uh, wife was involved with the Mission Hill School at that moment and helped get us started. And then Ann Fitzgerald kind of took over and kept going with getting the children into classes. Um, I had a relationship with a child care center. So we had two of the children in the child care center. Um, and um, we had an incredible uh, landlord. So it is so fortunate that you have a house. Um, we didn't have payment for the utilities or rent. We had to get that up and, and um, we did. Catholic Charities, um, Mahjong, she's just, the group at Catholic Charities were terrific. We had a contact that helped us all along the way. Um, and probably at that point, Point. The difficulties were in some ways with uh, our whole um, employment and working too with, with the state people. So it's helpful if we have clear directives from the state around what and when and how we can get folks signed up um, for the benefit packages and for um, employment. And so we did, and uh, lots of people helped with that. And the family now lives in Maine and is doing really well. So, and and Barbara keeps in tight contact. She's Bob and Jim are the godparents for the family and keep in contact with how they're doing. And they're doing terrifically well, employed, housed, going to school. The oldest is getting ready to, to go to college. And um, we also had Peg who helped with Paul and, and um, just other people who were right there, uh, ready and able. And it can get emergency at times. So it's good just to know that when you get the call, you got to kind of respond. Um, so it was wonderful experience and still is. Barbara keeps in touch and lets us know how they're doing. And we went up to visit them a couple of years ago and it, they're in a wonderful place. So we're we're very grateful. And Anne, compliments to all of you on all of that. And plus the playbook that you kind of went through and how you helped them through has been guiding lots of folks who are doing this in other parishes too. So it's great having you here. Great. Well, that was Jim Allaire. Boy, Jim took down every, he spent quite a bit of time getting that organized and it really is quite a good, a good book for everybody. Um, well, thank you for joining us. And then uh, TSARP is Temple Shalom Afghan Refugee Project. And Our Ladies and Sacred Heart have collaborated with them, as well as the Dover Church, in resettling folks from Afghanistan after, um, you know, the summer two and a half years ago when people were uh, hurriedly moved out. Um, again, the biggest challenge there was housing, um, but through... Um, uh, the great uh, philanthropy of a gentleman in Chestnut Hill, he made available um, um, apartments for multiple groups at about a 50% discount to fair market value. And so far we've worked, uh, we've helped transition. And I think that's really one of the primary goals here. The goal is to help set up the family, help get them acclimated, employed, financially stable, and I'll use the word launched and so that they can become independent. And that, that happened with the Comeys. Yes. With the Afghan folks, we've helped nine gentlemen through who have all been launched. Um, and we're trying to launch the last um, 
group of four women, uh, three women, one man, and then a family of uh, with two children. The biggest challenge is trying to find them housing and employment once they sort of settle in. So housing and employment have been the biggest changes. And we're dealing that with them now because their rent come up August turns to uh, market rent. So it's good. And they've all volunteered to help too, because as Anne and Barbara and others with the Comeys, there's some steps that you can, that you'll be faced to take, like signing up for a SNAP benefit or how to enroll them in schools or social security. And they've offered to be coaches as well to kind of talk through the process and how they went through. Mm -hmm. Good. So who will they be? Um, what we do know is it will be a family. Um, Catholic Charities was thrilled that the house has three existing bedrooms and it could be a fourth bedroom because um, finding housing for a family is particularly difficult. So we do know that. Um, we expect we've um, let Catholic Charities know we're moving forward. So we're hoping to get some notice in the next two to four weeks of who the family is and when they'll be coming. Um, no different than the Comeys and the folks from Afghanistan. We're just letting people know there will be some cultural differences that will have to be sorted out. And we'll try to educate everyone on that once we understand their origin. The living situation. This is like, as Tina said, an incredible blessing. It's a house here in Newton, um, very close to our collaborative parishes, uh, three to four bedrooms, fully carpeted. Um, and there's miscellaneous furniture, and we've started a list with Kathy Schneider and others, um, the sisters as well, to sort of begin the outfitting of it. That's okay. There's no. And then there, it's also on public transportation, um, which helps to make uh, it a little easier for people to get around as well. But as far as a difference, I would say, Anne, I know the challenge with the Comeys is to go visit them. It was to Roxbury, and it was it was a haul. Yes, yes, yeah, it was. And we did have the Daggett's really did all the, got all the lists ready and it's really helpful to have what furniture is needed. Um, but yeah, this housing in Newton is like outstandingly wonderful. I can't tell you, yeah, it's really good. So I've learned a lot and I, Please, um, there's, I'm mean, not drawing any, um, we're not judging anyone by using a particular name like a refugee or an immigrant or migrant. But what we've learned is the federal government classifies people differently. And so the folks that we'll be receiving um, through Catholic charities will be, de will be deemed lawful permanent residents. And so I should have put parentheses around that because that came straight from Catholic charities. The difference then is they are coming in as a refugee as opposed to a migrant. The refugee has this lawful permanent residency. It's also different than the form, than the way that the folk, our friends from Afghanistan came in because they were temporary residents. So they had to go through the whole green card process and it cost about five to $7,000 per person to go through that. So it was a huge fundraising effort. In this case, because of their status coming in, they should have a green card in three to four months and there won't be the need for that um, expense with lawyers. They should also have a social security number. So they should be able to start applying for jobs once we sort of understand their skill sets. Um, and I think that's an important thing to sort of discern is what skills do they have and what how are they translatable to employment here in the States. The program they're coming in under um, is a federal program that actually started at the end of the Vietnam War. And it was to assist folks fleeing persecution. So if you remember the end of the Vietnam War, you've seen video of people being brought out of uh, the country. A lot of them emigrated to, to Canada or the United States, and they formed this status as lawful permanent residents. Everyone will have gone through a background check, security background check, and a medical check. So as our expectation is, we'll understand if and what the medical issues are when they arrive, which is also huge, um, because at least we'll be eyes open when they arrive. 
And again, I apologize if I've misspoken about the terminology, but this is how it's been reflected to us, that they're coming in as lawful permanent residents and should be able to be um, up and running once they get here. Okay. So that's a huge difference as well, because the, the legal expense, and we're still going through it with the last family of uh, friends from Afghanistan, getting that green card is timely, time consuming and expensive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll go to the next one. So lots of opportunities. And so just remember, we can volunteer uh, Tom Morrison for any one of these. So if anyone feels like Tom should take one on, just jump in. And the welcoming one is a big one. Do you want to just talk about how you did it with uh, the Comey's meeting them at the airport and the steps? That was a big one. Yeah, we... We just, um, everybody just volunteered to go with their car and um, we parked and got ready. And then it was um, Bill Koffel who directed traffic so that we were able to um, move them from the airport. We have, you probably, if you saw that packet, you saw the beautiful picture of them coming and they were, they were all dressed up in their um, Sudanese clothes. It was just wonderful. And um, and they came and um, Bill directed the traffic from the airport and we went right to the um, Alaire's family, uh, to Barbara's house and there was dinner and welcoming and they stayed there. So um, they got to meet everybody and talk and um, Catholic Charities was there with us. Um, and people, you know, it was probably as many people as could get in there. I think around 10, maybe, maybe more. Um, and, uh, but everybody that had a car and could take people. I took Comey and one of the boys. Um, and it was great because he was showing him, you know, sort of look for this, look for that. They were very excited to be um in the country and it was it was just wonderful it was really wonderful so it's it's great to see them it's great to see them coming off the plane and and the whole thing it's, it's a terrific time and in this case we'll be able to take them right to what will be their home yes so yes the welcoming is... committee will be there to will be have stocked the house with food be ready with a meal kind of the whole meet and greet as they get there so um that's a task that if someone is interested in helping with, please do. Um, housing setup. Kathy, is it okay to say that you're part of that committee already? It is. Great. Great. So Kathy Schneider is part of the housing setup committee and talk about there are no coincidences. Um, you can share with what you're going through right now with your family's home and by coincidence, <laughs> we needed furniture. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this was this was sort of an answer to a prayer on my part, Andy. Oh, to 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 the rest of you. Some of some of you know um, whom I know personally. Know my mother died last fall, oh. and as the executor of her estate, I'm in charge of cleaning out the house. Oh God! So um, she lived there sixty years. The woman had way too much stuff, and but I've been taken it as a mission to put as little as possible in the dumpster and find good homes for lots and lots of stuff. I'm still looking for a home for her good set of China, if anyone knows anyone who wants 12 play settings. <laughs> but um, in conversations with Andy earlier, he mentioned to me that uh, the house was there and I my first response was, do you need furniture? And he said, well, some, some. So I've been very happy to, to pass on a few items that seem needed. Um, the Sisters of St. Joseph have been incredibly generous among, is in soliciting among their community members to provide things. So a lot of what the collaborative had to do when the Comeys arrived, you know, to get the dishes and the silverware and the pots and pans, that's all done. The sisters have agreed that they will provide all those things. 
so we the housing committee may will have a lot less work to do than it did when the Comeys came. But mm -hmm. there will be things, and Gina and I are keeping lists of all the people who have already so generously called, you know, or emailed and volunteered things. And once we get a better inventory of of the house, we will be getting back to people and saying, yes, this is exactly what we need. And it's not listed here as a subcommittee, but it's probably under the welcoming housing sort of thing is we also expect they're going to need clothing. So we don't think they're going to be coming with much. So that'll probably be a component that kind of fits into this as well. The third one is driving to appointments and um, they're not going to be driving when they arrive. There will be appointments to get to. So if you can make yourself available to drive them to a doctor's appointment or to a, whatever agency they need to go to sign up, that would be huge with our mm -hmm. Afghan friends. A number of them came with lots of dental issues because they were without care for a couple of years. And so people were driving them down to appointments at the uh, BU uh, Dental School in Kenmore Square because there was free or close to free dental care. So that's a big one. But if you're available just for driving and can make yourself available, that would be huge. Life skills teaching. The good news is we've got lots of templates on this. Uh, we actually, there was actually a meeting with one of the Afghan families this weekend on budgeting as they head into being fully responsible for, um, um, for housing. And the method we've done, we've used here um, at least I'll speak to it from the Afghans uh, standpoint is once they get settled in, we sit down with them and sort of set expectations. And again, the expectation here is to launch, you know, to get themselves sufficient. And so usually it's a graduated payment scale. So in this case, even though there's no rent being paid, we're, we've been talking about having them starting to pay rent once they get jobs, et cetera, and incrementally growing the rent we'll obviously be keeping it for them and we'll help use that to transition them, but just so that they can be budget trained to um, work that through. So that's a, you know, if you have financial background, if you've got time to sit with people and explain, and some of it's cultural too. Um, so for example, uh, one of the things that someone brought up from another experience is sharing the danger of credit cards. So they get these things in the mail, here, here you go. Hundred ten thousand dollars just charged away, <laughs> so that was a problem. Resume prep. We don't know what their skill sets will be, but we need them to quickly start applying for jobs. So if you could help someone with the resume, that would be great. And if you have any familiarity with some of the online portals to help them apply, um, that would be something very, uh, very, very helpful. So benefits. So. Catholic Charities is going to be setting them up or claims that they're going to be setting them up with some of the basics when they get here. The basics would be um, your green card, your social security number. And then with that, there are uh, food, it used to be referred to as food stamps. It's now called a SNAP program. Um, and then I do believe they get a little bit of a subsidy, but just making sure that they're signed up for whatever they can be signed up for. They understand the reporting components. So for example, if you do get SNAP, you have to report in every couple of months and you can't miss appointments. I know that sounds like a little thing, but um, it's very important to help sure help them make sure they stay on task. This next one, I'm gonna deem a big one. Um, we know there's going to be children and we know that they're gonna to need to be set up at school. So that's a big um, task and a little bit unknown right now, but helping them get set up at school, understand what the requirements of school, can they speak the language? Can they not speak the language? So there's a lot going on within that subcommittee. Um, and if there's any educators out there, that, that would be really, really great to have them jump in. I just want to um, add this one, Andy. I'm sorry I didn't catch it before we um, finalize the slide, but also um, daycare might also be something that would fall under this. Um, again, you know, we keep saying it, we don't know the ages of the children yet, 
but in the event that um, both parents are, you know, eagerly seeking employment and there's one child that's not school ready yet, um, if anybody has any experience with public daycare or um, the systems in place for that, that would also be, you know, under the education task, we would consider it. Good point. And then community orientation is a little bit of an extension of the welcoming committee, but just showing them what resources there are for them, how to take the tea uh, or the bus system, you know, how to get to a grocery store, where the CVS is, all the things we sort of take for granted because we know where they are in our community, but just helping orient them and walking them through and if there's any cultural differences, explaining those cultural differences. Um, medical dental is also, I would call it a big one. Um, and we, right now we don't know the family, but we will know their medical requirements when they get here. Um, just uh, dental tends to be lacking in a lot of the countries that they're coming from. And so getting them set up, helping them with appointments, they should be able, they should be signed up or we'll help them sign up for mass health. So they will have health insurance but just working that through with them, finding their primary care, et cetera. So that would also say that is a big one. Next. So I've talked a lot. Why don't I stop there? Any questions about committees? Any questions about responsibilities? What can we help answer for you? Um, do you know where the family is from? We don't yet. Um, Catholic Charities gets a list of people that, it's, that, are, that are approved every couple of weeks. Um, Philip and Marjean um, are looking for a family that they think will be compatible with us. Um, by that, I mean of the right, again, they don't usually have a house already ready that has three to four bedrooms. So they're looking for a good fit for that, but we don't know, but we expect to know in the next two to four weeks. And would they be Catholic? We don't know that either. Um, we don't know. Just to add on to that, um, once we do know, we'll we'll be sharing it as quickly as possible with the community because, um, you know, in the event, for example, that the family comes from Central America, we'll be speak seeking, you know, Spanish speakers for the committees if they're available. Um, so we will, you know, have more needs that come up once we have more information. Thanks, Tom, for the question. Marguerite, you had something? <laughs> Yes, I do. So I've been um, on a few Zooms regarding relocation and I live in Wellesley. Um, hello, my name is Marguerite. Um, and I've been told continuously, oh, we can't have them in Wellesley because they can't afford Wellesley in a year. But you seem to say it's OK to relocate them after a year. Could you explain why Wellesley keeps complaining about the rent in Wellesley? Thank you. Well, we don't know we don't know where they will go after they get here. So I think um, what I'll say is the goal is to launch them and help them settle into a community and a an apartment that they can afford. Uh, and we don't know where that journey will take us. Some of the folks from Afghanistan that have come over uh, moved to Burlington. A couple moved to Oklahoma. <laughs> and so it's hard to know where they're going to end up. But what I can tell you is we'll help find that journey. We'll help walk that journey with them and help them find housing that they can afford based on um, the jobs and the income they receive, wherever that might be. Is it OK if I ask another question? Sure. Yes. Um, so uh, the other question is, um, there seems to be a lot of Haitians in shelters Mm -hmm. that are not getting housing. Mm -hmm. And I'm just worrying why is there a higher proportion of Black people not getting housing? Well, it's different programs. So I'm quite familiar with um, the migrant. And again, these are not my terms. So I'm just using the terms that people have. Um, and, I, and I think that's why we opened up with distinguishing what group is what. Catholic Charities has been involved with this federal program for 40 years, um, and they have been doing it throughout that period of time. And the people, the folks that they bring in are, whatever that term is, I don't want to use the term wrong, but they're legally able to start working. The migrant 
program is a different program and it's folks who haven't yet gone through all of that process and are not yet able to work. And I don't disagree with you. It's hard seeing that. I mean, we're dealing, we have a, um, I mean, we're working with that through our parish right now, um, but they're different programs and they're different legal status. Um, in this case, we've worked with Catholic Charities a couple of times now, and so we're continuing to work with them on that. And Catholic Charities is also working on the migrant shelter and the emergency migrant shelter, but it's just a different path. Pam? Go ahead. Okay. Um, are they going to be involved with the Jewish vocational services as the Tony family was? What? What? The, uh, the uh, Jewish vocational services where they taught English, they did, you know, help them with their resume, they helped them find a job. So Don't know yet. Yeah. Do that. Yeah, JF and CS has been a great partner for um, the migrant programs and the refugee programs. They're quite overwhelmed at the moment, um, trying to solve um, the needs of the various groups, but they are a resource and we can certainly work with them. Um, they've been helpful with some of the Afghan friends. Lately, they've been pretty overwhelmed as well. We'll know a lot more once we know the family. Um, I think our real goal today was to sort of table level set and it'll tell you what we're doing, how we're doing it, show you opportunities where we can get to help. And as Ann said, it's going to take a village. You know, there was upwards of 30 people doing this um, with the Comeys. Um, so people can come and go as your time allows. But if you have time or you have a skill set that you could help out in a particular task, it would be super helpful to have you join us. Um, and like all volunteers, you, there's no pay. There's a good 401k plan, but that's about it. <laughs> and who is the head lead? Uh, Gina and, and myself. Could you please put your contact in the chat? See, I'm not in your parish. Well, I, I am at St. Bernard's in Newton, but... Uh... Okay, so... Um, <laughs> Uh, do you know how to do that, Gina? Add our contact in the chat. Thank you. Marjorie, are you not are you not able to see the screen with the slide with the contact information? Oh yes, I do. I'm going to take a snapshot of that. Thank there you. There you go. All right, good. Even better. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure, and thank you for your your good question. It is important, and um, I know that you're also active in our racial justice ministry. I loved your presentation last meeting. Um, so it's wonderful. I'm just so grateful for all the, the perspectives that everyone's bringing to this. And I know that there's a lot of people just kind of quietly praying and thinking through these things as well. So if you want to chat something to Andy or I, that's fine too. Um, we're happy to, um, happy to take questions anyway that they come, you know, and if it pops up tomorrow, that's great too. But we want to take a few more minutes to make sure people really are able to, process through while we're all here and see if there's something else that they want to talk more about or have more explanation about. Um, and why don't you go to the next slide while they're thinking about it. We'll just talk about how things will work going forward. Sure. So if you're interested and in, um, or you know of other people that might be interested, we've started a Google Doc already, which you can um, be invited to, to participate in, which will detail all the information. So right now it's basically set up to um, start getting the contact information for all the team members. We've gone through the house. We've itemized what's there and what's needed. And that's what Kathy and the sisters have been working through. As we get closer, there'll be a sign up genius. So you can um, sign up for different responsibilities. Um, and you can also just email us and tell us what your interest might be. It might be driving someone. It might be resume help. It might be you're a nurse or an educator and you're willing to help out in that respect. Um, we'll need folks that have lots of different skill sets and different time commit time availabilities. So whatever you can do would be greatly appreciated. Um, and I'll, I'll ask Ann and Barbara this, but I found in, <clears throat> in helping with the Afghan folks, it's an incredibly rewarding ministry 
And it's really beautiful to see how people come together and help others kind of move on with their life, particularly folks that are coming from, you know, a very challenging situation. So it's been a very rewarding ministry. Anne and, and Barbara and others who've been involved with the Comies, if you feel like uh, mentioning how you found it, I think that would be helpful for people as well. Uh, Gina, this is Lija. Um, yeah. Have you considered or um, shored up some mental health resources? Or does Catholic Charities offer that? Counseling mm -hmm. and other support? Yes, there is. What I have found, let me think if I get the path right here. Once people, folks are signed up through Math Mass health and get a primary care, they can then start to receive counseling through that. Um, there are a number of groups helping people who are coming in who are traumatized, and that is through JVS and some other groups. So there's resources out there, um, probably not as many as there need to be, but there are some resources out there. Uh, so does Mass Health offer an accelerated pathway to get primary care? Because usually it takes up to six months to even get a primary care appointment. Does Mass Health have a pathway? I don't know. Um, when the family came over from Afghanistan, we were able to find them a primary care pretty quickly. Um, and it was, we had a parishioner who is a doctor and helped sort of facilitate that um so okay it, so there was we were assisted by a parishioner who had a contact yeah we may need to i'm interested in the medical dental part of it so oh, i was just uh, thinking about um home to mobilize uh, regarding that so just thinking aloud Thanks. Yeah. And I think that's also, it's a great question. You know, where do we go from here with this? Having folks like Ann and Barbara who've been through it and can coach the folks from Temple Shalom who I've been interacting with who've gone through it. Um, you know, we do have sort of some best practices or at least some experience of what they've all gone through. So your questions are great. And um, I think you make a great leader of our dental and medical group. <laughs> <laughs> there we go <laughs> we won't be shy about asking <laughs> well that puts tom morrison off the hook <laughs> uh, I, tom which tom. one are you going to sign up for tom <laughs> tom is on the budgeting package team, budgeting <laughs> coaching team. <laughs> and we may need to raise some money because there, there probably will be some shortfalls and some financial needs. Um, it's not anywhere near the priority it was when the Comey families were coming in or the uh, friends from Afghanistan. So that's out there, but not as big of a priority just yet. May I ask how much do you need? Did you need to raise for the other family? Um, Anna, Barbara, do you remember how much was raised for the Comeys? I can't remember. Yeah. I think we raised about 12,000 to start. Yeah, and, um, then, and I would say it's, um, uh, Catholic Charities had us as soon as the family arrived, go right down to um, uh, Medicaid, Medicare, and just do all the documents that you need to do to get yourself into the state systems. Um, those are the ones you need the people and the phone numbers, and you do need to report. I'm glad you said that because, because of the daycare, um, they needed to, um, uh, the mother, Huda, needed to go down and just, um, you know, Re say she had a job and she needed to um, have daycare. So it's important, you know, to keep on um, all the lists. And it's good to have, uh, we had people who had certain 
areas of expertise run it like Kathy with the housing and somebody who would do, you know, the medical and someone with the education. And so you also have a list of people attached to each subgroup. It, it's helpful. Um, now that's good, Elijah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to add something from Jim and my experience. Jim is here too, but he's not in the in view of this of the camera. Um, this was unusual in that they came and stayed with us, and it was only two weeks. It wasn't a month. Oh, so, <laughs> uh, it was really a very special time with them. Very, it was very special, and I, uh, I think they became really involved with all the wider community because they would come here and bring food and, you know, take the kids places. And, and that was wonderful. So it would be great to have that sort of experience going on in this house that has been provided for them, you know, kind of people feeling free to come over and, you know, offer things and take the kids places and take the whole family places. Um, but anyway, Anne mentioned that we became the godparents. Well, you can't really expect that with refugees. <laughs> they're, they're not going to necessarily uh, convert to your faith, but um, it turned out that when the when the little girl was born, uh, Huda really wanted her to be baptized, and Huda had been baptized as a girl through her grandmother's influence. She was baptized, and you know, most of the people in Sudan are Muslims, and uh, Komi, the father, was a Muslim, but he was attracted to Christianity. So um, it ended up that we had religious education going on for all of them. Paul had been baptized, the oldest boy. And so he was getting his um, uh, first communion. They were all coming into the Catholic church. So uh, Rosemary Seibold ran these religious ed sessions for months and we had all kinds of involvement of, of trans, you know, interpreters who came and, and helped with that. Um, so it, it was unusual that they all became Catholic and uh, were all baptized, at, except the mother and, and Paul were already baptized, but everybody else was baptized at the same time and came into the church, you know, confirmation, et cetera, first communion. So that was a, uh, an unusual and beautiful experience. And that's how we ended up being godparents to them. And, and that's why, you know, we stay pretty close to them uh, with staying in touch. Thank you for sharing that. And so, the best, and the just one thing I have to say, the best part about the baptism was Comey going in, all dressed and ready to go right into the fountain, and he went in the tub, the big yeah. tub, and dunked. And Father Dan did his whatever, and it was like wild. And then we had a great party at the Alayers afterwards. Yeah, it was just great. Dunked into the into the whole tub there, the whole basin. Um, any other questions or comments? Uh, two or three quick comments, maybe a question. Uh, one, uh, I find this uh, extraordinary. I said to Father Dan that uh, uh, it represents uh, the very best of Catholicism and the very best uh, of Our Ladies and other parishes uh, involved. I, it's extraordinary. Uh, two, uh, it will become clearer, uh, and I haven't been involved, but uh, as we uh, find out who uh, the family is, what their skill set is, uh, including language, um, and the sooner uh, we're able to do that, I think uh, uh, the more effective uh, uh, we will be. Three, um, 
time frames for some of us might become an issue. Uh, uh, so I just say that uh, there are a couple of uh, time frames for me that I'm just not going to be here. So again, uh, uh, the, the sooner we have that information, the better. And then at the risk uh, of, uh, of volunteering. And I, I did see that once you volunteer, you become the chair, but I'm not gonna become the chair. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I might be able to be helpful with one of the two areas that were cited as challenges on the employment side. So uh, to the extent I think there might be uh, a way that I can be helpful, I think that might be uh, one uh, way that I can be helpful. Well, that would be fantastic. And, and look, we're not, no one, unless you raise your hand to be the volunteer, to lead the group, that's fine. <laughs> no, 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 no. And I, we also understand we all have other lives too. So yeah. what, what you, whatever you can do when you can do it will be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Um, Gina, so our next Zoom would be uh, March 21st at 7 p.m. And then once you go to the prior slide, just so we can see our contact again. And if anybody has any questions, you know, feel free to reach out through call or email, um, either Gina or myself, and we'll be happy to answer any questions. And if you are interested in joining the ministry in whatever way, shape, or form that you can, if you could email us your contact information, that would be great. Um, and we'll start assembling. And if you know of others out there who you think might be interested, please feel encouraged to recruit them. Gina, anything else? No, I'm just overjoyed. Thank you, everyone. I do have one short quote I want to read from this um, lovely document that the Allaire family prepared, A Time of Grace, a refugee resettlement story, which, as Andy said, we're using a bit as our playbook. So, you know, building on the successes of the past. Um, and this is from a volunteer who's not in this meeting. So I would like to read his words for you. He said, this project was such a constructive focus for me. Given all the upset going on with the leadership of this country and the crises in the world, positive action keeps one focused on the needs of so many less fortunate and a means to help and support others in compassion and love. It is living the gospel. So similar to what Paul said, you know, we're showing, showing the world what, the, what Catholicism Amen. can do at its best. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. So with that, um, feel free to reach out to either one of us. Um, if you could mark your calendar for the 21st, we'll do it through, we'll remind folks through flock, flock notes again. Um, and thank you all for taking the time. This is very exciting and we're, we're looking forward to, uh, to moving forward. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's great. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Take care. Great.